Well, I guess uh, we should get started. Um, first off, of course, greetings. Welcome to the uh, February meeting. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, we're doing pretty good up here, so we'll get started. I want to actually uh, kind of touch on uh, Lyndon Holmes to start us off. Um, as mentioned last time, we are doing some refreshing a bit on the uh, uh, Linden Home offerings. We've added some open plans for traditional homes, uh, a few more options for houseboats. Uh, both of these, uh, particularly the houseboats, have proven very popular. I think they're really cute myself. Um, you'll find those and and really all of our Linden Home offerings. Um, paste this in. At this slow. I am sorry to hear that, Sassy. Uh, Sassy. Um, not that you can hear me. <laughs> uh, we also still do offer our Premium Plus members the option to choose a Linden home. Uh, if you find an available home, uh, you know, and your Premium Plus member, uh, all you'll need to do is submit a new support ticket using the Land and Region uh, slash Linden Homes category. And include a soil to the location in question. Uh, we'll take a look and uh, we can assign that home to you. Uh, it's a very popular thing. Uh, I do a lot of those um, throughout the day. And uh, there's, of course, more coming soon with uh, Linden Homes. Uh, we should soon be seeing the first Premium Plus selection of Linden Homes. Um, and there's some additional Linden Home themes that are currently being worked on uh, for both Premium and Premium Plus members. Um, there'll be a few more goodies. I'm not gonna not gonna let any cats out of bags, but there's some other really neat things coming with Linden Home soon as well. Um, I know a lot of people are waiting for a while for those 2048s, and they are definitely coming, and they're looking really nice. Seattle, I do not know, um, probably not for too much longer, but uh, I know they've taken a while, and I apologize for how long that's been, um, but they are in process. Um, it's taking a little bit of reworking that wasn't necessarily planned for, but they are on the way. So yeah, it's it's soon, it's um, the uh, trademarked Second Life soon, uh, but it is coming at least sometime before the next millennium change. <laughs> I don't know when the next millennium changes. <laughs> Is it soon? Uh, it's soon in a, a geologic sense. It'll be a while. <laughs> But they'll be they'll be here. The the new Linden Homes will be here before that, I'm sure. I'd say that's yeah. I'd say that's not a bad guess, Seattle. Um, <laughs> and sorry, Vic. That's all good. I didn't see the question for me. Uh, it's hard for us to, you know, pinpoint ETA, especially when it's still in the development process. Uh, sometimes exactly. you can take two steps forward. Sometimes you can take one step back if you discovered a bug that's, you know, affecting other parts of the system. Um, so that's why we say soon, because if we gave a more specific ETA and we didn't meet it, um, you know, that would look bad. And we really try to shy away from providing ETAs that are, are well, not provided by us, <laughs> first off. Um, but yeah, anything in development, it's just... Uh, more reasonable to give a, uh, I want to say vague, but you know we're working on it, and you know we'll we'll talk more about it as more concrete details come about. And as soon as they have any a, a date, then uh, we'll definitely you know share it with you guys. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's with with the Linden Homes, there are a whole lot of moving parts, um, and people having to to build the content, place the content, 
uh, get them into the system, make sure it works in the system with the old ones. Um, you know, there's just any number of different things that that need to come together. So it can it can take a little bit, um, especially you know with the change to including the 2048s. Um, that's a whole new layer of addition. So they're coming. I promise they're going to look awesome. So yeah, exactly like. So they're going to be really nice. I've I have I will admit I can't share anything, but I have seen items and they really excite me. So you'll like them. I we can talk about the uh, lit. Oh, you had a question? Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. Do we it. still have calling cards? Are we still handing out calling cards? I or believe they... you still can. Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear that they were discontinued or anything. All right. I had. I knew there was some kind of discussion, but I wasn't sure if we were still doing them or not. Okay. Yeah, they still they're still there. Still created when you have your account. So do I, Amy. Yeah, we, there was a bug, um, was that two, three years ago almost, I want to say, where it was like almost every login, you'd end up regenerating them, as oh, yeah. well as the ones you already had, as opposed to them just regenerating on a fresh clean. If you delete them, they should be gone. At least as far as the trash can is concerned. Yeah. Um, if they're friends, they will regenerate. Um, otherwise, they, they you will have to recreate if it's just if you only have someone's calling card and you delete it. But uh, friend calling cards, those regenerate if you uh, clear them out. So if you've got dupes, that's one way to take care of that. Well, we can talk about the land store next and the uh, updates that have been released. I'll go ahead and paint the URL here. If you open that, you'll see a refreshed look and a little bit of a clear uh, information path on how to uh, review the various land products that we offer from linen homes to private estates. Um, any feedback, send it our way. Uh, we are eager to hear what you guys think of it, uh, if it's a little bit easier. If you're finding uh, information that you previously couldn't easily find more, more readily accessible and things like that. Yeah, I really like the, the new look of those pages. Um, it's a lot more accessible and informative than what we've had before. And I'll and also looks a bit more modern. Yeah, exactly, Carla. I like the uh, splash images of the, well, right now it's a, of the uh, the woman in the room, but uh, it just kind of shows off uh, what Second Life looks like. Um, and it, it's really, you can see the minute details just in that photo alone. Um, you know, the records uh, off the, TV stand, uh, the light reflecting off the buildings through the window. Um, all of that is that's basically just a screenshot of uh, you know what a lot of residents get to experience. So um, building out your own uh, parcel or region if you haven't yet is a uh, I feel is an amazing experience and kind of just brings you closer to Second Life. Speaking of nice uh, lighting and so forth, you want to talk about PBR, Vix? Absolutely. Uh, as we mentioned last month, uh, we announced a lot of exciting projects uh, in the year end. And let me go ahead and post the blog 
So for those who want to read about it later, can read the 2022 year in review here. Uh, we're going to touch on one of the uh, bigger projects that was in the works for quite some time um, that got a lot of us excited on its release, and that is the physical based rendering or PBR in the uh, right now it's in the GLTF PBR materials beta viewer. Um, check it out, read the blog. Um, there's a lot of information that is readily available. Uh, we also have a, a Second Life University video. Oh, that wasn't it. Was it it? Okay, that might be it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. That's it. Uh, it's I'll the blog. video. the video on it. Okay, cool. Um, that's uh, easily disseminated information. Um, if you're more visual, you want to just hear it uh, spoken out loud, uh, check that out. Um, but there's a lot of information to digest. Um, you can play right now with the viewer, and I'll go ahead and post the viewer release page. I would add that you're all looking really great in PBR right now. <laughs> right now, uh, in order to experience uh, uh, PBR, you have to log into the beta grid. Is that still correct? You can view you it. You mentioned that you're you can, in PBR now. Yeah, you can you can see what it looks like uh, anywhere. But if you want to actually uh, play with PBR materials uh, mm -hmm. and do the setup of it, yeah, you will need to be on a DD. So the regions uh, that you're going to want to visit uh, if you're interested in playing with the uh, PBR viewer, I'll go ahead and post this here, the names, so you can copy them later. Do you have a name mark first? Because I, I went to look at them last week and I couldn't find the regions. There's, there's a number of regions. Um, let me type some uh, region names for you. That might help. Yeah, uh, VIX has got them. Materials 1, Materials Adult. Rumpus Room, Rumpus Room 2, Rumpus Room 3, and Rumpus Room 4. I bounced through them yesterday as well, so I know that they're still up and around. Thank you. Now I'm going to go ahead and type this part here and also mention it uh, through voice. Um, if you have not logged into uh, the beta grid, um, what you're going to do is you're going to file a support ticket with us uh, basically just requesting uh, a DT access, and we'll definitely grant that. Right now, we're uh, constantly looking for any new requests so we can get you in there as quickly as we can. Um, so you can expect probably reply uh, when it's during business hours, within a few hours. Yeah, I did that last week. It was within an hour. So awesome. Good to hear. <laughs> Uh, Alicia, um, you can actually bring up, uh, as Wendy mentioned, uh, the viewer now and experience Second Life. Um, and it'll be, you know, applicable everywhere, uh, including the uh, linen homes. Um, if you want to go play with the materials, uh, right now it's still on the beta grid. Um, but I'm sure there will be plans to release everything uh, onto the main grid at some point. Uh, thank you, Wendy, for that note also. Patrick, as far as I know, yes. Um, I know that we've been working pretty close with him on a lot of things, including that. That I don't know, Sint. I wish I did. Yeah, as we get closer to uh, uh, everything PBR related being imported into the main grid, I'm sure there's going to be a second blog post with uh, further information. That will definitely be sharing here. Because it's, it's a big update. I'm sure there will be talk of it. Yeah, this is, I think that as far as the changes in, in the rendering, um, it's one of the biggest things as far as tech for us. I mean, you know, anytime that you do a major good thing like that, like EEP or even going back to Windlight, 
you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of comment from from us on the blog and elsewhere. Yeah, Tork, I don't think you're, you'll get the full experience if you're not fully in it. Yeah, that's correct, Tork. It will it'll look like any other region. You won't see anything that looks off kilter or anything like that, but you also won't see the benefit of the the effects uh, that are there, you know, that are available via PBR. You know, you'll still see existing materials and this kind of thing, assuming they're on the content. What I was trying to establish is whether it breaks viewers that don't have it, but it, but you no, it when Mesh used to do that. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, and you don't see like I mean, I remember when Mesh came out, you'd see the little the triangles and things like that, the little triangle particles were you know, placeholders, but no, you don't see that at all. Um, it all looks just like what you see today, um, as far as content is concerned. Um, there is, and it's discussed in the uh, Second Life University video, there are some graphic settings that you may want to adjust. Um, if you've got an older viewer, um, you know, or older system, um, that'll help uh, ease any load that you might feel from it for things that you won't need. But uh, as far as the look of the content, it looks like what you would expect it to look like today. So unless you enable PBR, you shouldn't see a performance hit on a PBR region. Is that correct? That's correct. I was on it uh, yesterday, day before, on a, on a non-PBR, and was over on uh, the Rumpus Room regions and did not see any any noticeable change from how my viewer would normally work there. Wendy, one clarification on that. Uh, if mm -hmm. you have a very high uh, a volume region that you know depending upon the number of people on it you start experiencing lag and whatnot then uh, a region with pbr uh, might push you over the edge in that the communications between uh, host server and all of the people in your region could be enough to push you over the edge but that's only going to be in instances where you're already close to that bar to begin with right good point but, but it has an off switch as well, does it? There are a, new, a couple of off switches that are in the that that are in the PBR or the the viewer for that. Yeah, um, it's discussed in the uh, that SL University video. They talk about some of the settings to adjust. I also wanted to point out in the uh, wiki page for the PBR materials, um, the section that is labeled, what is it and why is it used? Um, anyone who's not familiar with PBR, I highly recommend uh, just taking, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes and uh, reading a few paragraphs that just touch on the overview of what it is. Um, because afterwards, after you finish, you'll you'll begin to realize just how important and how, how much this will change um, how you look at Second Life. Uh, it is really something. It's well written. It's uh, plainly spoken, uh, so it's easily digestible, and um, it, it kind of just shows the scope of uh, uh, the project uh, that is in uh, beta grid right now, and uh, what we can all expect.
So moving right along, uh, as if PBR was not enough, uh, we also have group chat history coming forth. Brand new feature. Um, this will allow you to see what was discussed in a group, including messages up to an hour uh, before you logged in. Um, that will be part of a, a future update coming soon. Yeah, I agree, Sassy. You know, it's always it's always that message that came just before you logged in. And good, Torek. I know that uh, uh, some of the other third parties are also either have or are implementing it as well. Ours should be coming up pretty soon. We've got a number of uh, things that it's going to be coming with. So, I'd also have to touch on another uh, project um, that's that's in the pipeline. It's coming soon. Um, we've talked about it before, and that's the uh, the next generation new user avatars. Um, they were previewed at SL19B. Um, since then, there's been a lot more work going on with them and continuing on them uh, to really make them something that's going to be worth being our new user starter avatars. Um, I don't uh, currently have one to show off today, unfortunately, uh, but they are getting pretty close uh, to release. Uh, we're going to make sure that it's uh, very well supported and presented before we do, however. But I just wanted to toss it out and make sure that people knew that that is still coming along. Yes, indeed, Izzy. Oh, wouldn't that be something to have a yinglet in there? I am just full of soon, Karen. I think it's soon. I think that's what I'm full of. You know, Karen, there is a uh, spreadsheet for uh, suggesting last names. Sassy, we could talk about that here because it's involved with uh, a service that we provide and review. I mean, we can't make any decisions on, you know, what, what will happen, <laughs> but uh, we can definitely talk about it. Posted that with permission. We've got a, a small debate going on about um, how message history should be handled. So feel free to comment away on that, please. Thank you, Tor. Welcome back, Izzy. Welcome, Izzy. 
Yes, uh, the decision came down that uh, rollbacks to repair uh, regions would now come with a fee. Um, anything that is uh, server side related, anything on our end, um, does not get charged. Um, as to your question about uh, a credit, um, that would be like a feature request um, that you can send through on the review team would take a look at it. Um, I mean, we couldn't comment in on it here. Um, that would have to be decided by, you know, powers that be. Um, but I do understand uh, your point, you know, longstanding uh, region owners that uh, were getting rollbacks for free because it was just uh, an emergency service that, you know, we would do when um, all the other attempts to fix a region or help recover items uh, had failed. Um, so that has a nominal fee now. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yes, uh, as you mentioned, uh, there is a 30 day uh, grace period um, and um, after the 30 day period, um, if that balance is still uh, revolving, uh, it hasn't settled, um, the account would have administrative hold. However, um, nothing as far as the regions at that time would uh, be affected. So, excuse me, it would just be a administrative hold on the account. Uh, kind of getting your attention that uh, it needs attention. But in the meantime, uh, any regions that you own are still open and accessible as they were before untouched. So the last thing we want to do is uh, ever, you know, uh, start touching region. Ifrit, um, we weren't part of the conversation here. Um, so I really don't want to touch on, on, on like patterns of other uh, region owners. Um, sometimes, uh, especially new owners, you're making changes and um, you're you're not sure how to repair it. Um, you can request a rollback before, and uh, we would do it. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't say what discussions were taking place because we weren't a part of them. Um, yeah, um, that question might have to be unanswered here. I don't know if there's any plans on that, Kima, um, but uh, never say never. I mean, it could come up, uh, but there's no nothing I know of currently. I think it's going to more depend on why it needs a rollback than anything else. Yeah, like what Izzy just said. And really, there are way too many permutations and possibilities to go through uh, how something might happen here. So I'd leave that on a case by case. And Mary, um, one of the ways to handle that is actually, um, first off, you know, remove the. Uh, uh, the amount that's been put into the group uh, when you go to shift it first, uh, but keep it in the group. I can go over it with you later if you'd prefer, if you don't want that specific. I kind of feel like my question got lost there. So um, do you guys know about this current status of uh, the Porto Unreal for the SL viewer? As far as I know, no. Um, but the, uh, uh, the server meeting might have a better handle on that. What, when, what time is that one?
That one's every Tuesday. Um, here's actually a list of the different user groups. They'll be able to get a lot more into the, the technical end of things than we can. And also just wanted to make sure any other questions or concerns or things you wanted to bring up, please feel free to jump on in. I'm not sure where things sit on that right now as far as uh, adding uh, more waterways and so forth. But do know that there is additional Lindenholm regions coming in, and that will also include potential of additional waterways to hook up to existing content. So there is still that likelihood that there will be additions along those lines. I have a question about um, classified ads as it relates to land. I put individual parcels and always have in the classified ads. And I've noticed now when I go to create a new one, the top line is only allowing me to use like four words where it would let me at least give a brief description. Um, the older ads still show the old format, but anything new gives you such little room in the header. Um, is that something that is new, or is it a glitch, or is it going to be changed back? That sounds glitchy to me. I would uh, recommend putting in a support ticket on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what category do you suggest I file the ticket under, though? Sorry, let me catch up here. Uh, you want to repeat the issue? I can uh, give you the ticket path to use. Um, it's 
it's classified ads. When you go mm -hmm. to run one, the header, the first line that you see, um, mm -hmm. you can only put like four words in the header now, very small words, I might add. Um, and that it never was like that. You could at least put a line with um, some succinct information. I'm just not sure um, what to file the ticket under what category. Um, I would actually pivot and do a bug report. Have you done, have you opened Jira before? I have. It's been a while, but I have, yes. Okay. Um, so what I would do is uh, file a bug report, and then you can PM me the bug report, and okay. then I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, notify the uh, developers of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and that happens in the Second Life Viewer? You were in the Second Life Viewer when you saw that? Because uh, we'll have to uh, reproduce it in our environment. I will check. I, I'm not in the Second Life Viewer as we speak. Okay. Yeah, that'll but just I be will, part I of the report. I will log uh, in and, and, yeah. and double check that. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Sure. And, no, um, thank you. To find the viewer version that you're in, uh, you can go to help and then yep. about Second Life and then just uh, copy the yep. first line so we know which uh, viewer version it is. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for picking that up for me, Vix. Oh, no worries. I thought we lost you there for a sec. <laughs> you did. <laughs> So the rest of the floor is open for the uh, next 15 minutes or so. Any questions? I appreciate all the questions so far. Thank you very much. Given the terrifying news this week that the Bing AI bot wants to rule us all and dominate the universe, just how worried should we be about the SL chatbot bo box going crazy and taking over the virtual world? <laughs> you talking about Chat GPT? Yeah, we actually uh, we we no longer. I think Boxy got it. Yeah, about Boxy, yeah. No, Boxy, Boxy they've already dream. taken over. And I would just say that if that happens, we've got a lot more to worry about than what's going on in Second Life. Do not saying that Boxy isn't capable of ruling the world. If my computer asks me if I want to play a game, I'm shutting it off. <laughs> so many of you are probably way too young for that. Thank you, Send. I don't feel as old. Well, of course, we've now got, what, Boxy 5000. I think 3000 is still sitting in a box around here somewhere. I'm a horror guy, so I naturally thought you were just talking about Saw. <laughs> <laughs> a little older than that. Yes, but I have that in good authority, Adam Burp, that you just asked to speak to Batman anyway. Hey, we were uh, at a big meeting about two weeks ago, and we each went into the um, AI algorithm where you ask it a question, and it uh, tells you a story based on your question. And we all asked the exact same question and got ridiculously different but very in-depth responses, and it was kind of frightening. Oh, Adam, that's a good point you brought up. Uh, yes, Boxy does have uh, limitations. So um, regions that have, uh, is it 10? I know there is a number out there. I think it's double digits. If there's more than a few uh, residents in a region, even if it's a laggy, Boxy will kind of like, oh, I don't know. Um, it requires um, more of a touch from us uh, because what we do is we have a list of regions that are kind of under strain, but have a high number of residents uh, there. So what we do is we actually come in and visit the region and um, just shout around that the region is uh, gonna be restarting in a few minutes. So if you've ever been part of a, a large gathering and you suddenly seen one of us come in and kind of start shouting that the region is gonna be restarting, that's what it is. Um, so it's a list that we're regularly monitoring throughout the day. Um, now, if it happens during um, off business hours, Adam, I suggest submitting a ticket. I know it's probably not the fastest way to get help, uh, but at least we'll be able to uh, review it as soon as we can. 
But yeah, uh, we, we just don't want Boxy interrupting large gatherings um, because there's always a chance that while it may be laggy for you, um, it might not you know relate to everyone else. It could be made less like a, a viewer side issue that things are slowing down for you. Um, so it, it's kind of like uh, we put that in Boxy, so he's not in there interrupting large gatherings, and it's and it Dixie, just keeps it in our hand. That done under uh, region offline. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we we get them all the time, and it's fine because we still review them. Um, but if it's super laggy and it needs attention, uh, definitely report it as an offline. speak it because obviously I can't type that we have Lyndon coming in sometimes during a concert that might have 80 or 90 people or something and they just shout saying we're going to restart the region so you have to be pretty quick on your toes to say actually it's an event it's laggy because there's a lot of people yeah uh, we usually have some uh, pre-arranged verbiage uh, that announces that we have to restart this region otherwise it's going to crash on all of you because it's uh, it's being triggered on a list that we can see it's uh, nearing very close to uh, reaching its uh, stored memory. And um, it's usually within a very short span. If we don't get to it, um, you might see some interruptions in service. So there's just a way to actually prevent that. It's also the Dunkirk spirit, though, isn't it? Because everyone sort of like stays rooted to the spot. It's OK. We'll endure the crash and come back afterwards. Torek, have you ever tried using the cancel restart option too? Yeah, you can't do it if you guys have pressed the button. I think it depends upon which way we do it, so that's something that uh, we'll look into. That would be handy to cancel it. Like I say, I mean, a lot of people would rather sort of take their chances and go down with the ship and they can always re-log rather than, you know, whole restart and everything, because it doesn't always crash. I mean, it runs like rubbish but it doesn't crash it sort of, sort of stays upright how about we uh sync up the next time i see one of your, your regions and your names pop up on the list torque um we'll initiate it it's usually uh has a, we try to give a five minute warning uh see if you can cancel it on your end you say you couldn't though huh we don't like tried. doing a hard restart on large gatherings. We definitely like putting the warning out there because if we do just a quick restart, it, it will look like a crash for everyone because the region will suddenly be uh, put into the process of restarting. So anyone who's there, it's going to look like a crash. So we try not to do that. From an attendance point of view, though, a restart is you know definitely going to truncate a concert, whereas low you know high usage or something may or may not hence the fact that most people will sort of like will will hang on for grim death and and come back if it does go down yeah i i definitely hear you um it's a list that we're not like trying to maintain optimal performance list it's we're trying to prevent a crash within a very short span. So um, as far as performance is related, I know when you have a large gathering, there's always going to be a little bit of a compromise that I, I'm going to sacrifice some performance for the experience. Um, maybe less so now because of uh, the uh, uplift to AWS scripts are just performing uh, so much more better. Um, but you, you still, when you put 80 people, 90 people, in a small space, there's going to be some latency. Um, and you're willing to deal with that because you're part of just a large uh, experience. So this list, it's it's more related to this region is about to crash and everyone experience is about to get interrupted at once. And we don't want to see that. That's, that's fair enough. Community. No, that's, that's that's totally fair enough. You you want to you don't want your your system crashing. I don't know if it upsets your servers and things. It's just yeah, it would be good to be able to do that cancel option that you said. That would be very very handy actually. What well, like we did last time, delay the restart after the concert. 
that's always the trade-off. That um, I think it was TJ who did it last time, so I messaged him and said, yeah, that, you know, that's possible. We, we promise um, we'll do a restart afterwards. Yeah. Uh, if you kind of just give us maybe uh, uh, some uh, forewarning that uh, you know this region uh, is going to experience very heavy load <laughs> over the next day, uh, kind of hold off on restarting. I can we can circulate that around the team. Like, uh, let's just not touch this one. But at least you know what happens around the corner, though, uh, once it shows up on our our list, and and we don't you know kind of uh, tend to it the the consequences that it could very well crash. Also, being in the UK, of course, we do it at different times, so you probably aren't aware that it's a peak time for us, but 12 noon SL on a Saturday is our peak time. Absolutely. The, the problem uh, there to work a lot of times is the fact that they don't know this particular region uh, is being used by people in that kind of a time frame. But yeah, if you're having a specific event going into live chat, if live chat is open and saying, hey, for the next hour or two hours or whatever, we're having an event on such and such. So if you see any issues, please hold restarting until the end or hold restarting during this period and we'll restart it, you know, uh, once we're done. We'll just go ahead and make sure that the person who's handling um, region issues and stuff like that is aware of that. Right. It's usually one or two that's assigned to that task. So it'll be pretty easy to uh, communicate to them. Then we see this region name just kind of hold off and they, you know, they know what's going on. I'm going to put a ticket in for that then. So it's sort of like a permanent because it's every Saturday we do that. So can I put a I ticket in? Probably to... could, um, I would suggest doing, I'm maybe. sorry, Vix, I didn't mean to walk over you on that. No, but I would suggest the, the uh, live chat mm -hmm. each time because you don't want somebody to forget or the person that usually handles that to be out that day and then your region gets restarted. I'd probably make it a part of your uh, warm up or startup uh, uh, tasks to go ahead and jump into live chat and let them know. But that would be just me, to be sure. No, that was what I was going to say. 100% agree. Either call or phone. We have about uh, six minutes left today if there's any more questions or comments. Sassy, not that I'm aware of, but that could be another feature request. And a pretty good one at that. That's a great idea, Sen. In fact, um, I think you were already uh, planning to attend the uh, the server development group. I would toss it out there. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I've seen that in uh, MMOs. Um, not trans, not having your your avatar transferred to a region. Although uh, I'll, I'll use Guild Wars as an instance. Um, for regions or areas that was overloaded, it would create a copy and it would teleport you there. And when the main copy, um, the population decreased, you would see an option, would you like to join the main map? And when there was almost no one in your map, uh, you, it would give you a warning that you're gonna be transferred to the main one. Not sure how much of that could be uh, developed here, but I would toss it out because it, it is a good idea.
<laughs> gorgeous. You just got to go for it all. <laughs> Hate to sound like a broken record, but that would be a future request. <laughs> Although if you want to yeah, add everything. thirty dollars a month onto your region monthly cost, we could probably figure something out. Absolutely, Carla. Thanks for coming by. We hope to see you next yeah, month. Absolutely. Our pleasure. You guys have an absolutely wonderful rest of your week. Thank you. We'll call it next meeting 22. Is it a 22nd next month? Is it again? That's correct. March 22nd. Yeah. Fabulous. Fourth Thanks Wednesday. for having us. Day after my absolutely. birthday. Oh, boy. Oh, now Adam knows your birthday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I was worried like, about it. Well, you he just pings me every day. Happy birthday, birthday just in, happy birthday, just in case. So, you know. There you go. Thank you, Thank you, you See you next month. Thanks all for coming. Take care, everyone. Thank you.